All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a great day. So this is going to go ahead and be a different type of video. Usually we're doing a lot of stuff where we're driving. In this video, we're going to go ahead and be talking about two things primarily. One, the new camera setup. Secondly, the update on what happened to the Q50 and the process that I had to go through once it was actually stolen. So first things first, you may be wondering why we're actually shooting this in the dark. We're actually shooting on the new Insta360 Ace Pro 2. So this camera actually has a crazy low lighting mode that you guys can go ahead and see looking pretty good right now. And again, we're out here in the dark. We just have the lights for the house and that's uh, pretty much it. Now, to be completely honest, the camera itself does amazing. However, if you actually want to set up a whole setup like this, just put the camera in front of you guys as well. Now, the camera does do really good on itself. However, if you want to set up an actual vlog setup, uh, something that you're going to go ahead and be using pretty frequently, then this is pretty much everything that you'll definitely want to have. So that way you have the full setup. So we have a mirror right here, so we'll go ahead and show you exactly how everything looks. Now the battery life is really good with these cameras, however, if you're shooting all day, you're definitely going to go ahead and want some extra batteries. So the first thing you're definitely going to go ahead and want to pick yourself up is going to be a quick release mount from, again, Insta360. So these are all found from Insta360. And I will actually go ahead and mention, should have mentioned this in the beginning of the video, this is not a sponsored video by all means. This is just the camera I'm deciding to use, especially coming up into 2025. But going back to the Insta360 quick mount, this is a very, very handy attachment, which you'll actually need. The second thing you're definitely going to go ahead and need is the cold shoe. This is actually going to go ahead and allow you to attach any attachments that you may be using. Now, today, the hottest mic is the DJI Mic 2. A very, very good mic. That's actually what we're listening to right now. Now, one of the really cool things about the Insta360 Ace Pro 2 is you can actually run the DJI Mic 2 Bluetooth. So you actually don't need to run the transmitter. You don't need to run the cold shoe. We actually went to Vegas and we ran it, just the camera itself and just Bluetooth a DJI mic uh, to the actual camera itself. It did well overall. However, like I said, this is before we got all this stuff. I actually bought the camera, jumped on the flight, so I was unable to get all these pieces here. However, now that we're back home and we set it up, this is way better. In order to hook up the transmitter, you're gonna go ahead and actually need the mic adapter. So this is very important. And this last piece you don't need. However, it makes your life a lot easier if you're gonna go ahead and be charging your batteries, especially if you get the extra one. And then if you get the package with the two batteries on the camera, that will be three total. So this fast charger plug definitely will help you out there. So you're not having to charge the camera anymore. So after you get all those attachments, this is exactly how your camera is going to go ahead and actually look. Once everything's attached, you go ahead and see the quick release mount is going to go ahead and be here at the bottom. The mic adapter is right here connecting to the actual mic wire going underneath. You actually have the cold shoe mount that's right here that actually ends up connecting in through the quick release right here. That's why you actually need that all together. And obviously the mic transmitter right there being separate. Now, in my opinion, this camera setup is definitely one of the best camera setups that you can get, especially going into 2025. With that being said, I have used a few different types of action cameras as well as the heavier setups with the mirrorless cameras. Uh, some quite expensive three, four thousand dollar setups with this setup, with all the attachments being around the seven hundred dollar mark, depending if you get some deals, which there usually are some pretty good deals. I got to go ahead and say this definitely is one of the best bangs for your bucks, especially it being an enthusiast that we go out at night and record at night. The low lighting feature, you cannot beat that as well as the software editing on this is amazing. It's honestly better than any other editing software that comes with the cameras themselves. And again, a reminder, this is not sponsored by Insta360 at all. But as you guys can see, we definitely have bought some stuff from them. So if y'all are watching this, definitely help me out. We also have the X4 that we attach to the back of the car. So if you are looking for a full, full setup, definitely consider picking up one of those. So that way you get your 360 on the back of the car, as well as this inside your car which picks up again the interior and your lighting and all that good stuff. It looks amazing. With all that being said, let's go ahead and move on to a little bit more depressing subject, the Q50 Red Sport 400 being stolen. Besides showing off the low lighting on the camera itself, that's the other reason why we're actually out here. The Q50 Red Sport was literally stolen from right over there. Uh, I will go ahead and throw all the videos that we have and all the pictures as we talk about the subject. No, it was not planned. I talked about possibly wanting to sell it later down the line, but honestly, I was driving that car every day to work. Uh, and I was really enjoying it because if you guys are actually new to the channel, we have a 2004 SVT Cobra manual. Uh, we have a 2011 Shelby GT500 manual. We have a 2024 Dark Horse manual. And we also have an 18 that's auto. And then we also have the big truck right here. Uh, but with that being said, I was actually using that one as my daily. Um, it was tune down pipe. Pretty fun car from factory. It's around 400-ish uh, to the motor, and it was making closer to the 400 wheel with the downpipe tune 
uh, and some other things I had done exhaust wise and whatnot. We actually just got it fixed from an accident. We actually ended up hitting a coyote uh, out in the country a little bit before that. We got a new carbon fiber uh, lip and we had new wheels on there. We had some really nice Velgens on there, which the fitment was pretty nice overall. Again, I was really, really happy with the car itself and I was planning on keeping it for some more time. So the morning I actually walked outside when I noticed the car was pretty much gone, I was taking the trash out. I looked across the street, it wasn't there. Um, I pretty much kind of started panicking immediately. I noticed some glass on the ground. That's when I pretty much ended up calling, uh, calling it in to basically report it being stolen. And luckily we do have cameras, so we were able to see the process in which they stole it. Uh, again, I'll go ahead and start putting some stuff up there. Uh, but basically they ended up stealing it and I immediately started making posts on social media. So a huge thank you to everybody who did post it. Uh, we did actually end up finding the people's Instagram. Believe it or not, um, pretty much we watched the whole process of when they stole the car, they took it on a drive. They literally posted everything on Instagram. Addresses of possibly where it was located at. Uh, went through that as well. However, at the end of the day, I thought back and I just decided, you know what? It's not even worth it at that point anymore. Uh, car's gone. I don't even want it anymore. If it was to be found, uh, it was pretty much abused. It, they did whatever they did to it. So after the insurance does the investigation that they do, uh, that did take a few weeks, but they pretty much declared it that yes, it was stolen. It's not, we're not going to get it back anymore. I know for sure the damage that they did was to broke the window to get in. Uh, they pretty much ended up using the fobs uh, to actually go ahead and start the car um, as they do. Unfortunately, my people that have affinities know they're not that hard to steal, man. They did that. Uh, I know they took it around. They swung it a couple times and all that good stuff. They did end up actually stopping by to some of the locations that we were reported at uh, being seen. With that being said, we did see a Q50 that was completely stripped up. I don't believe it was mine. I believe the person was still driving at that point. So after the investigation had finished, they did actually go ahead and write a checkout. Uh, me and the insurance went back and forth a few times. The issue that we had, it wasn't just a base Q50. It was a Q50 400. Because it was the 400 package, there was really not a lot of cars to compare the value to. And that's where the issue was happening with the insurance. However, at the end of the day, we did meet with a good number. Uh, however, we still definitely obviously took a loss once you're talking about modifications and all that good stuff. Now, when these types of cars are actually stolen, they're most likely used as strikers. Uh, so at that point, I knew I was going to go ahead and either find the car burned somewhere uh, or at a slideshow, then burn um, or some type of, you know, other illegal activity that was going to go ahead and happen. Turns out they actually ended up using my Q50 to steal uh, somebody's Challenger, I believe, or Charger. I think it was a Charger. Uh, but they ended up actually pulling up, stealing someone else's car with my car. Saw that on video and everything. One distinct thing that my car actually had compared to all the other Q50s around in this area was it did have the uh, emblem that was RGB. So it was bright red. So at the end of the day, that bright red did show up on the camera of their car getting stolen. So after that, I pretty much just wiped my hands with it and just said, oh, well, uh, basically it is what it is. Time to move on. Um, later on, though, I did end up seeing that the rims were up for sale tires were roasted uh they were about four hours away and i thought about it i'm not gonna lie uh, if you guys have seen one of my other videos where i accidentally apparently uh, allegedly bought some stolen wheels and I, when i went to go sell them uh, marketplace because it wasn't the correct fitment and this was actually for the q50 as well ironically um i ended up getting pulled up on and i lost the wheels uh because they were quote unquote verified as stolen property uh now with that being said i could have done the same thing uh, but I was not about to drive four hours. It's, again, not worth it for me. Um, it really isn't. I'm not going to go ahead and make more of a headache for that. Um, but it was funny to see the wheels, and I knew they were mine. So, again, a huge thank you to everyone who was posting about the car when it did get stolen. Um, you know, it definitely meant a lot to see all y'all helping me out in that sense. Um, with that being said, this is probably the last update that we're going to have on the Q50 Red Sport. Unless they ended up finding it, I think they'll just end up calling the insurance, though. I don't think they'll call me anymore. Um, but with that being said, I definitely do, again, appreciate every single one of you. And again, if you're not yet subscribed, definitely consider subscribing because it would help out a lot. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.